Today, I want to run through seven players that have disappointed me so far, or I think have just been disappointing to start off the 2025 NBA season. The first person I want to talk about is Denny of Dia for the Portland Trailblazers. Denny was in one of the bigger trades last offseason when he got sent from Washington to Portland in exchange for the pick that ended up being Bub Carrington, Malcolm Brogdon, and a future first round pick. Denny was also widely known being on one of the best contracts in the NBA. So this seemed like a really good move for Portland at the time. This year so far, he's been disappointing in this role, but I feel like Portland as a whole has been disappointing in pretty much every year under the Chauncey Billups era. So Denny's usage has dropped this year, but not by much. He had a 20% usage rate last year in Washington, down to a 19% usage rate in Portland because he's still playing next to high usage guys like DeAndre Aiden, Anthony Simons, and Jeremy Grant. So far this year, Denny is averaging 10 points, but he's shooting 34% from the field. He's shooting 18% from three on three and a half attempts a night. He's getting to the line a decent amount, shooting 87% from the line around four attempts a game. He's averaging six rebounds, three assists, and 1.3 steals. And what I've been seeing from Denny on the defensive end of the floor has been fine. I actually think he's slightly better this year from what I've seen last year in Washington. It's just his rhythm in this offense has not been off to a great start. He's not knocking down his shots. And I think that's going to take some time in Portland that doesn't have a true floor general right now because Scoot Henderson, who's supposed to be their franchise point guard, is coming off the bench. And they are playing together at times. I just feel like Denny is struggling to be integrated into this offense. And like I mentioned before, we're talking about he doesn't have the greatest track record of getting these guys involved and getting the most out of his players. So I'm a little alarmed for Denny of Dia this season in Portland. I still think he's going to be fine as a player still under one of the better contracts in the league during his time with the Trailblazers. I just don't know if this year is going to go all that well. Next up, I want to talk about Tyrese Halliburton and the Indiana Pacers because Tyrese Halliburton can't hit a shot to start off this season. He is averaging 16 points, four rebounds, and seven and a half assists. Now for Halliburton, those numbers really aren't that good because seven and a half assists is high, but this man led the NBA in assists per game last year with 10.9 a night. So that's dropping by three and a half assists a game. The rebounds are slightly up, but the offense is down as a whole. He's shooting 39% from the field. He's shooting 27% from three. 73% from the line is also odd as well because he was a mid to high 80s from the line guy over the course of his career. So we've had a very large sample size of Halliburton in his career being a good shooter. So this year, it's off to a weird start. He's not getting the looks he wants. I feel like he's rushing his shots as well. But then also open threes, he's not shooting well. On open threes that are four to six feet from the nearest defender, he's shooting just 5% on those. Now, wide open threes, he's shooting 33%. But you can't be shooting 5% on open threes. That is not the start that Indiana wants because with all these injuries in the Eastern Conference and the Knicks are maybe underperforming so far, it's Cleveland and Boston at the top. Indiana has a great chance to end up being the third best team throughout the regular season, but they're not gonna ever be able to take advantage of that if Tyrese Halberton isn't living up to his potential. We saw him struggle last year after the in-season tournament, but that was because he was banged up and he was injured. We don't know of any injuries right now. So unless it comes out that he's playing through an injury, then maybe we can get why he's not playing well. But there has been now a decent sample size of Halliburton over the last year where his shots aren't falling. So I think it's something to keep an eye on. Now, I don't know what's going on with Jamal Murray, but he looks like a completely different player after those 2023 playoffs. Last year, he was fine throughout the regular season, but struggled in the playoffs against Minnesota and even some games against the Lakers. Obviously, he was great in some games, but in others, not as much. And then we got to see him in the summer play for Team Canada in the Olympics, and he had to be maybe the most disappointing player in the Olympics last summer. He looks slow. He looks like he couldn't get to the rim. And I think he struggled with those FIBA rules. So people were keeping an eye on him. He still got that massive extension from Denver. But to start off the season, he is not been good for the Denver Nuggets. He's averaging 16 points, four rebounds, four and a half assists tonight. But he's shooting 37% from the field on 14 and a half attempts. He's shooting 30% from three on four and a half attempts. And it just feels like Jamal Murray has not been that great of a player this year. Four rebounds, four assists tonight as well. He's already dealing with a concussion, which you hate to see. And those are tough to come back from. And it wasn't a concussion injury last year, but Darius Garland had a jaw injury. And when you have these serious head injuries, you're going to be a little bit hesitant when you're attacking the rim for most people. So I wonder how Jamal Murray's aggressiveness is going to be all year long. So I'm definitely keeping an eye on Jamal Murray. And the Nuggets are very thin as a roster right now. And they're getting good play. Some games out of Russell Westbrook and Christian Brown is playing well. But Aaron Gordon is hurt. Porter Jr. is playing better. They need Jamal Murray to go back to what he was in 2023. But we have a decent sample size from meaningful games last year in the playoffs and in the Olympics. Maybe he didn't care about the Olympics that much, but it's a little alarming if you're a Nuggets fan. Now, one of the bigger free agency signings was KCP leaving the Denver Nuggets to the Orlando Magic, and he has not been off to a good start for the Magic this season. Through nine games, he's averaging seven points, two rebounds, 
one and a half assists. He's shooting 32% from the field, 24% from three this year as well on four and a half attempts a night. And the games without Paolo haven't been great. Now, he did play well against the Pacers in their seven point loss the other night. And I think the defense has been fine as a help defender so far this season, but I feel like KCP is not living up to this $20 million a year contract. I mean, shooting 32% from the field, 24% from three, seven points a night when you're making $20 million a year. Yeah, that's that's not great whatsoever. So KCP needs to get involved more in this offense, especially with Paolo Bancaro out. And he's a veteran. He's a leader. He's got to get the ball in his hands. And I think he's going to have to learn that you're not playing with Nikola Jokic anymore. You're going to have to find different ways to score on the court. Maybe work more off ball. Jokic found you. You're going to have to find the ball a little bit more here in Orlando. So I'm keeping an eye on KCP, who's 31 years old. This is the last big payday he's going to get in his career, most likely. So I'm hoping the aggressiveness, the motivation doesn't take a step back since he got that large deal. Man, Keontae George has struggled in year two so far, and we see a lot of sophomore slumps all the time. We saw that last year with a bunch of guys from the 2022 draft class, and they're doing just fine in year number three. Keontae George showed a lot of flashes last year, and I'm not going to put too much disappointment on Keontae because he's still incredibly young. He's 20 years old. He's not in a good environment right now because the Utah Jazz are one of, if not the worst team in the NBA this season, but Keontae George Reminds me a lot of like early days, Jordan Poole in Golden State. He is averaging 16 points, seven assists a night, good surface numbers, but 32% from the field, 28% from three, three and a half turnovers a night. It's not what you want to see from your year two guard whatsoever. The usage rate has gone up 3%. The efficiency has gone down. The turnovers have gone up. It's not what you want to see from Keontae George. And I think he's a good playmaker and he's a good combo guard. I just wonder how he's going to develop over the course of year number two. I still have a lot of faith in Will Hardy as his head coach. I'm just keeping an eye on Keontae in Utah. Now, I don't know if this is an Olympics curse because we talked about Halliburton who played for Team USA. We talked about Jamal Murray who played for Team Canada. Another Team USA member on the Olympics is having maybe the worst start to his career. And I think just played his worst game of his career the other night against Phoenix. And that is going to be Bam Adebayo of the Miami Heat where he let Yusuf Nurkic have a good game against them. And Bam was 5 of 21 from the field in that one. I don't know what's going on with Bam right now. He is averaging 15 points, 9 rebounds, 3 and a half assists, but he's shooting 39% from the field. He's shooting 20% from 3, 67% from the line. I don't know if him trying to be more creative with the ball in his hands. He wanted to become more of a shooter this year. He is taking over 2 threes a night. He's never taken more than one three night in his career. So this is the volume we have never seen before from Bam from downtown. Maybe that's messing with his rhythm because he is not hitting these threes whatsoever. His field goal percentage is down. He looks rushed inside the paint as well. And I think he's been good defensively, but good isn't the standard for Bam Adebayo. He's one of the best defenders in the NBA. And I don't think he's played like a top five defender this year for the Miami Heat. Tower Hero has popped out on my screen more when I'm watching Miami. So yeah, I'm keeping an eye on Bam. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to get back to what he was. I wonder if that's going to mean he's not going to take as many threes, go back into the rhythm of what he is as a big man inside, but it's still a very good ball handler for somebody of his size. Maybe he's going to focus more on the defensive end of the floor and let the offense still operate around him, but let guys like Hawkes, Hero, Rozier, and Jimmy Butler do more of the load, especially from downtown. So yeah, keep an eye on Bam. He's been disappointing to start. This one was really weird. And the last player I'm going to talk about is D'Angelo Russell. Now, everything we knew about JJ Redick as a head coach, D'Angelo Russell seems like the opposite of a player that JJ Redick wants to coach, and we are seeing that on full display this year. I was not big on D'Angelo Russell at the end of the 2023 season, and I think the 2024 season was one of the best years of his career throughout the regular season, but it's already looking like he is getting benched. It looks like he is not going to be on this team past the trade deadline. I know he's been in talks before. It looks like JJ Redick just doesn't want to play him anymore. I know he's been starting all these games, but he's not playing as many minutes throughout the last couple of games, especially against Memphis, where he didn't play well whatsoever in that game. And I thought took some really silly shots. He's averaging 12 points, two rebounds, six assists to start off the year. He's shooting 37% from the field and 29% from three. And if DeAndre Russell is not shooting the ball well, he really doesn't give you much else. Now, he's a fine playmaker, but he's not a good defender, and he's not really a great off-ball player as well. So he really shines when he's hitting his shots. He has the confidence. He has the rhythm, and that is not on display whatsoever right now for him in the Lakers this season. So that is going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. There's just seven players that I wanted to talk about that I think have been disappointing. If there's a player that you think has been disappointing to start off this year, let me know down below.